Just over one year ago, I decided to investigate something I knew nothing about. This all came about when a good friend I'd known since my high school days informed me she had chosen to dedicate 18 months of her life as a volunteer at the Baha'i World Centre in Haifa, Israel. Immediately, I was intrigued by this. Personally, coming from a background of no formal religious education and being brought up by a family of agnostics and atheists, I was removed from the world of religion and, to be completely honest, relatively sceptical of its relevance and motives within society. Having my friend on the inside as a follower was my chance to dig deeper and attempt to understand the notion of religion. Specifically learning about this particular religion was my goal. So I set out on a journey in search of answers to find out what the Baha'i Faith is and what it is actively doing to make this world a better place. You can read all you want about a religion, but um, until you, you come along you ask people the questions of, of why they've chosen to become Baha'i, or, um, question, and you question yourself as well. But I'm not here with this kind of ulterior motive to kind of go one way or the other. I'm just yeah, yeah. I'm trying to under just understand. understand. What this yeah. Thing is about. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You can find activities of the Baha'is everywhere in Pakistan, in Malaysia. It's a world religion, isn't it? It's yeah, it's world religion. Well. You know, I'm talking about Islamic countries. Right. But here, this is a problem. Maybe in the other countries, you're not asking about your religion. That's why the problem is not there. For example, in Sudan, as I heard, they are not having religion in the ID. Okay, so... So doesn't... nobody will ask you, what's your religion? So it's not an issue, but here, it's very much... Here, here it is essential. You see, as a, as a Baha'i, we have to obey the government. We are obeying the government. Since 1960, in 2004, they said we sh you should not talk about the Baha'i, this case. Okay, we are not talking. Okay. After this court case, the government itself start talking about the Baha'is. All the paper they are start talking about the Baha'is. And we have to defend ourselves. Just to tell the people we are not bad citizens. Yeah, you're just a citizen like everyone else. That's all. You want to so they, they, they invite us for a talk in different papers, in uh, different TV channels. We are talking like this. We are not opposing the government. We are obeying the government. And we are not proclaiming about the Baha'i faith. We are proclaiming about our rights. We said we want our rights as an Egyptian. This point of modern day persecution really hit a nerve with me. I was taken aback that in this day and age, people's fundamental rights are being obstructed based on what they believe. So I decided in order to give a credible account of the challenges Baha'is face, I needed to visit the United Nations headquarters in New York. There's a, there's a mutual respect there with the Baha'i community being very involved, I think, in communities at large. Uh, I think unlike possibly a lot of other religions of the past, not pointing the finger at anyone, there seems to be a, you know, more of a, a closed door with some communities with other religions. And this, this isn't the case, I think, with the Baha'is. The Baha'is are very open to, to sharing and caring, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, or being open to other other members of society and, and other cultures. So definitely the doors are open. I was impressed to learn the Baha'i international community has had consultative status at the United Nations since its formation, and previously they were involved with the League of Nations.
in the early history of the Baha'i faith, some 30,000 or so people were put to death, early followers of the faith were put to death, uh, because it spread like wildfire. It was a really a very powerful and uh, effective movement, which the uh, particular rulers and leaders of Persia at that time wanted to stamp out, because they were all feeling very threatened by it. India is a nation that has the largest Baha'i community in the world, with approximately 2.2 million followers residing there. Seeing I have now been in contact with Baha'is in Europe, America, North Africa and the Middle East, it was time to visit the community in Asia. Understand and respect faith, then we are losing something that's about the essence of the nature sure. of a human being. Exactly. And that's very, very important to me and I think to the world. And the message we have to promote is that faith is a really uh, positive thing, which is why the social programs that the Baha'i do are so important. Because actually, in the end, faith is not just about abstract spirituality, it's about the practical implementation of that spirituality in the way you react with others. <laughs>